Hi everyone, this is Mia Wood again, Associate Professor of Philosophy in the Philosophy and Sociology Department at Pierce College. Today we're going over the basics of the Fitch program that is associated with the logic textbook Language, Proof, and Logic by John Barwise and John Echemende. This tutorial is meant to get you acquainted with some of the features of the Fitch program and how you can begin to use them. So we will go over what the uh, Fitch window looks like. We'll look at the proof pane and the goal pane. We'll also look at how you can use buttons and menus to navigate, to type into, or to um, adjust um, proofs. We'll also uh, look at how you can use the step and proof checker to check your work as you go or when you finish. First thing you need to notice is the proof pane, which is um, highlighted by an arrow. This proof pane is the area where you will uh, either construct and complete proofs or simply complete uh, proofs for arguments that are given to you. You will also see a goal section which is highlighted by this expanding arrow. And uh, this is the area where the conclusion of an argument appears. Once you have begun generating a proof for a conclusion, you will notice that on the right-hand side of each line that has been generated, that is each inference that you assert, there is a menu that will allow you to justify the inference. Uh, at the very beginning, you will be using a justification known as Anacon, and this is simply the shorthand for the notion of validity. In other words, uh, when you have made a valid inference, but you don't have a specific rule to cite for this inference, you use what's known as Anacon. Of course, we'll talk about this in depth, um, but you should know about this drop-down menu. In addition, you can uh, see again the arrow, the blue arrow, that is highlighting a couple of buttons. On the left side is uh, a button that has a check and an X. If you want to check a step in a proof, you highlight that step and you click the check button. If the step has been validly derived, you'll get a green check mark, which you can see in the example I've given you. Once you've completed a proof, you have filled in all of the steps, you have cited both your uh, justificatory rules or justificatory moves, and you've also cited the line number or numbers from which an inference or and all inferences have been derived, you can uh, check to see if you have completed the proof correctly. So this is a, a really helpful way uh, for you to learn uh, how to construct and complete proofs. So let's go ahead now and take a look at the program in action. Remember, you have a couple of places where you can locate your language proof and logic software. Uh, one place is in your applications folder. Um, another place is, if you're using a Mac, is uh, on your dock. So let's say you've dragged the uh, Fitch program to the dock. You can just click and open it. Um, you can also, as we've mentioned before, create shortcuts. The Fitch program is uh, uh, represented uh, by the uh, F icon with the backwards uh, E and uh, variable X and the letter, capital letter P. So double click on that. What opens is a blank or untitled window. You can stretch it if you want. Um, you will be told in a given exercise to either open an existing file or to type directly into the program. Let's start with typing directly into the program. Notice that you've got an orange arrow. Um, this is the slider, and when you've generated a certain number of lines, 
um, you can move the slider up and down. It's a way of putting your cursor in a place uh, in order to type or use buttons to generate lines. So um, let's type in a sentence, let's say cube A. If you want to generate multiple premises, you're going to need to either go to the drop down menu under proof and add a premise or you're going to use the command or control R feature. Now notice when you generate another line um, for a premise, the Fitch bar drops down. Remember that the line along, the vertical line along the side of your argument, of your proof, um, is one part of the way that we style the derivation. The way that we generate the distinction between the premises, what's given to you in an argument, and any inference that is derived from those premises or that premise is this Fitch bar. Okay, so suppose that we have uh, the sentence cube A and uh, A is the same shape as B. The inference that follows from that, which you will uh, assert by adding a step after from the proof drop down menu or simply using the command or control. Uh, a operation on your keyboard is that B is also a cube. Notice that the slider, every time you've moved down, the slider has moved down with you. Now, suppose that you wanted to do something in the second premise. You know, you wanted to I don't know, close up the gap between the uh, B and the closed parenthesis. In order to work on this line, you need to move the slider. When you are justifying an inference, in this case QB, you need to highlight or cite the lines from which the inference was drawn. So you keep the slider where it is, and then you click on, in this case, QB, and A is the same shape as B. The rule that you use is strictly speaking not a rule in a system of rules, but it is a valid inference, and so you will cite Anacon. Now you can check this step by clicking on the button to check the step, and since it is a valid inference, you get a green check mark. Now let's open up an exercise so that we can see another way in which uh, proofs can be completed when you are given a set of premises. So I am going to uh, open up, let's say, uh, an exercise in Chapter 2 since we're just starting with Fitch. And I'll just grab exercise 2.27. Notice that we are given a whole slew of premises. And then down at the bottom in the goals window, we're given the conclusion. If you want to show the step numbers so that you know where you are in a given proof, you just go up to proof and click on show step numbers. Remember, the slider is going to allow you to work on a given line. Now here, there's no way, since you're given the premises, there's no way uh, that you can type onto or into a given line. The program doesn't allow you to do that. Uh, but what you do is you add a step after, or you use Control or Command A, and then you start drawing inferences. So let's take a, a moment to draw an inference. Line one says B is in the same row as C. And line four says A is in front of B. It follows then that A will be in front of C. So we find the button front of, and then we insert A and C respectively. 
we're able to do this because the slider, we're able to type on the line because the slider is in the right place. Now, in order to cite where we got line five, in other words, in order to cite the inference, we highlight lines one and four. Notice that one and four appear on the right side of the screen. And then we justify the move as an anacon move. That is, line five is a logically correct or valid inference from lines one and four. We can check the step if we want, and we get a green check mark. Remember, you're going to use all of the premises given and derived in the derivation until you get to your conclusion. So if A is in front of C and A is in the same row as D, then that means what? It means we can infer, we're going to make another step here, that D is in front of C. We check the step again. And then lastly, notice the only uh, line that we haven't used in what was given to us is line three. We just derived line six, so now we're going to use lines three and six to get line seven, which is our goal, namely front of FC. Last thing we want to do we, is check that the proof itself is correct. So uh, we've already checked each step, but let's check the Verify Proof button and notice when we've done everything correctly, we get a green check mark. Don't forget, the LPL software manual has some great information for more robust use of the Fitch program.